Uh, good afternoon. It was a, a good day out there. It was nice. The rain held out for us. We were able to stay outside on the new turf out there on F3. I thought it was good practice. You know, with another install going in, uh, to be able to practice, I thought a little bit faster today than yesterday uh, was a good sign for this football team. Questions? How has Terzilli looked the first two days? So far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. I'd like to give uh, all those guys a couple practices before I start um, making too many uh, comments about it. But I thought, you know, he's made the catches that he's had available to him, which, which is good. He's a tall, long guy with, with a nice wingspan. So his, uh, his, his, his ability to catch the balls outside his body is pretty good. Couple so pads on Monday? We will be, I'm in training camp mode right now. So we've got two days in uppers and then full pads the following day. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right? Full pads? Big Saturday. So. Sunday, right. yeah. Right. Yep, Sunday uh, uppers, Monday uppers, Tuesday full. Okay, what kind of strength could nose tackle be for you with Kirksey, a three-year guy, and uh, everything we heard about Joseph last year? For us to play defense at a high level, that nose guard's got to be a disruptive guy. You know, you go back to a, a guy like Ramel Meekins, who then handed the torch to Charlie Noonan, who then handed the torch to Scott Vallone, and now the torch has been handed to Kenny Kirksey and Sebastian Joseph, or Isaac Holmes, I should say, after Scott, Isaac Holmes. All of those players were very disruptive players in our defense, and we're a little unique in how we play that nose guard. We rely on him to, to create a lot of havoc on the inside. So to have somebody who's been in the program as long as Kenny has and somebody we feel has got the, the potential upside that Sebastian does, you know, it, it, we feel like we've got two guys there that can perform at that level. Now they got to prove they can do it. Do they play it similarly, or, I mean, they're different body types, right? So Yeah, they're, they're all different. They're, they're a little bit different body types, but the position is played the same way. Well, how much have you seen him grow over the last year, and where do you see him at now? I think I, I think I certainly saw him grow during the spring and in the off season. I saw him make a play out there today. Uh, ultimately, it's going to be over time that it, that he's going to have that all those defensive backs are, are going to have to prove themselves. I think it's still too early in training camp to uh, uh, to assess it, but um, I'm pleased with the direction he's moving. Kyle Quinn Gauss wasn't a starter last year, but he played a ton. Just what's your comfort level with him right now? Very comfortable. Like, to me, he is a starter. He started uh, multiple games last year, did a great job for us when he was in there. So, you know, he's done it. You know, he did it against Arkansas. He did it against other teams on our schedule. So I think he's a, he's a guy that in my mind, I, don't, I forget, uh, I don't know how they, they list who the returning starters are, but in my mind, he was always a returning starter. How what positions do you think you're going to start working freshmen in soon? It seemed like running back and corner guys are already starting to give a look there. I, I don't know if it's, it's by position or by person. You know, I think a guy like Dre Boggs flashes. You know, so you say, okay, we gotta, we gotta see what he can do, see how much he can, uh, he can take in mentally, and see what kind of role he might have. I think the two freshman running backs. I spoke about them yesterday. You know, as we as we get further along in training camp, we're gonna have to see how many things can they do. You know, are they just ball carriers right now, or can they are they mature enough to to take on a a little bit of a bigger role? You know, up front on the offensive line, we're gonna have to say, all right, is there. Is there one of these guys or two of these true freshmen that we think have a chance to help us? If it's not the first game, maybe the fourth or fifth game. So we got got to really evaluate. I think the young offensive linemen because we still need to build depth at that position. But ultimately, those are very individual uh, decisions. They're they're never uh, never really made by position because you know, the players usually make those decisions for you by what they show you out there on the field. Are you happy? I understand it's two practices and it gets sloppy and it gets cleaned up as it goes. Are you happy with where they are as far as execution after two practices? Are they further along? Or? I don't know if happy is the emotion I would use, but I'm, I'm pleased with where we're at right now. And when I get to this point after the second practice, I'm always anxious to put the pads on and then see what it looks like because you know, having coached the, the line for that many years, it's certain things get done without pads on that don't get done with pads on and i think tomorrow we'll start to see that and ultimately when we get the full pads we'll have a little bit of a half scrimmage practice five i think we'll have a little bit more information and do you see like timing everything's good do you see the time very pleased with the timing very pleased with the pace of practice we've had the uh, you know we've had the shot clock on uh, from the very first play so uh, I'm, I'm excited i thought again we, we practiced faster and more efficiently today than we did yesterday with more in and I, again i think that's a good sign uh, what are your expectations considering the, the amount of experience you return to offensive line? I don't know. I mean, my, my expectation of their performance level is high. You know, on offense, it takes all 11 pieces. But, but when you have a chance to, to put five guys who, who are returning as starters out there at the same time, you know, I think the expectation level goes up. And I think it, for them, if you ask them the same question, I think they'll say the same thing. 
Kyle, what about uh, Kwanzaa Lambert? A guy, I think he switched positions around this time last year and came, looked like he came on really strong at the end of last year and then missed some of spring camp. Where's he at now? Yeah, I've been pleased watching him run around. I, I think, I don't know if I can evaluate him until we put the pads on, but, um, but, I, but I'm pleased with, with him being in the right position. I'm pleased with the speed he's getting to that position. Uh, I think Kwanzaa is a talented guy who's going to play a lot of football for us. What about uh, pressure in a quarterback? How much of an emphasis will that be this summer? I think it's an emphasis every year. If, you're, if your question is pressuring with four, five, or six, I think that we're going to have to find out. You know, do, we have, do we have four guys that can get there? And if, they, if we do, you know, that's, that's certainly a bonus. Um, we know we've got the, the schematic ability to get to the quarterback. And sometimes that's with four or five, sometimes that's with six. Um, but I think we'll know that a little bit later in, in training camp. We've got some younger guys who show some natural pass rush ability. Now we got to see if we can, if they can do that in the scrimmages as well. We've got time for two more. Kyle, these are guys that didn't pass the conditioning test. I'm just curious what what the conditioning test consists of. Is it different by position? Than... Uh, no, it's a 110 test. So the different guidelines though, like the different times, yeah. There's different times for different positions, combo line and skill. Hey, Isaiah Wharton, when do you make a determination corner safety you kind of do down the line skill? Probably after the first scrimmage. And I think that'll give us a, a decent body of work to uh, to really take a look at it. And I don't know if we'll completely make that decision, though. You know, the guy like Delon Stevenson really went the whole season moving back and forth. And even now we have discussions about, you know, okay, we're playing him at safety, but are there going to be certain situations where we want to bring him down and play him at corner? Because he's, he's got he's got a skill set that allows him to do that. Um, certainly the more you can do, the more valuable you are. And I think we'll uh, a little later in training camp we'll, we'll know a little bit more. Thank, Thank you, guys. Uh,